Hey guys, welcome to the table. I'm Doolin, and this week we're going to be talking a little bit about priming your miniatures and the best, most affordable way you can do that. If you're brand new to the hobby, you might not even understand why this is necessary. Uh, but priming your miniature is basically giving it an undercoat that causes paint to adhere to it better. If you're using plastic or even metal miniatures, you're not gonna be able to just paint down and plop it on your miniature. You, you gotta prime it first. And, and like in all things, there's a bunch of different brands that you can use. There's, there's a bunch of different ways to apply it, but I'm gonna talk to you about two ways that I've seen work. One that works well, that's cheap, and one that works really well that might not be in your price range. The first brand I want to talk about is this Rust-Oleum brand right here. Now this is the cheaper option that I told you about that is good. I, I've used a bunch of different primers before uh, and these are readily available to me. Uh, they are also the best that I've seen. Uh, they're the easiest to use by far uh, and I get them in all sorts of colors but the way you might want to just start off is by using just the plain white. Now this is, you want to make sure that it says primer, it's not just paint, uh, that is important, but this one right here is, it, it, it says bonds to plastic right here, it works really, really well. Uh, I've used this on a ton of my miniatures, especially the ones that I got started on, and when you first apply it, you'll think you're going to ruin it, you're going to want to come back here and message me and get really mad, but let it dry, it shrinks, and I've, some people will say that it goes on too thick. I mean, obviously, if you're finding things by Citadel or Games Workshop or, or uh, Army Paint or any other of those miniature-based paint brands, they're going to make primers that are specific for miniatures. This is not made specifically with miniatures in mind, obviously. However, I can show you in, in a couple of uh, sections, you're gonna see examples that it doesn't, really take away like i mean it, some people think it might dry on too thick it might cover up some of the detail i've yet to see that happen if you do it correctly that will not happen uh, and what do i mean by that well when you are using this and any primer the technique you want to use is not to just straight on to your miniature you want to go in a waving motion so if you have something you want to practice with me it's just a slight wave in fact, you can go back and forth with it and it creates sort of a wave effect. And obviously you're gonna be wanting to put this on a surface that you don't mind getting paint on. I normally use a pizza box, whatever is readily available to me. And I just sort of do this wavy motion. And then I, I twist the pizza box again and I do this wavy motion again. And I twist the pizza box again and I do the wavy motion again. Then you wanna check, make sure that you got all the undersides, like that's the easiest place to miss on your miniature, any uh, hidden, place underneath an arm or something like that. You want to make sure that you get it. So this is the first option is just this. The second option that you'll see a couple of examples of is using a technique called zenithal highlighting. And Max actually taught me this one and it, I've used it ever since because it really does bring out those shadowy areas better and it preps it for your for any type of like especially if you use contrast paints this is the way to go. So you start by covering your miniature in a black or uh, in in our case, also a dark gray. You can judge in this these next two pictures which one you think looks better. I might like the gray better. And, and, and that was the first time I ever used gray. I'm, I think I might like it better. I think it blends the white and the grays better uh, than anything I've ever used before. I enjoyed this one a lot. Now that being said, I've used black and white for a long time. After I switched to some better primers that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, you will notice that yes, it does cover up a little bit of the detail. But if you're not painting these for commission and you're just painting these as, a, as your collection and you're having fun with them and you don't wanna break the bank, this is an extremely affordable option. I believe that each of these cost me only $4 and there's more paint in this than in most of the name brand really nice miniature painting uh, primers. And those are 
well over four dollars <laughs> if you found them for four dollars let me know where you bought them uh, but yeah so that's your that's your second option your third option is an interesting one and i don't know if i like this one i just wanted to see if i could test it out and i tested it for you guys you can be the judge of whether or not you want to go this route but i, I chose a base primer that is the color of how i kind of want the miniature to look in this case, I used the ghosts that you, or the spectral walkers that you can get for Zombicide Black Plague. And I don't want to spend a lot of time painting each of these walkers when I, when I plan on making them basically three or four colors each, and that's it. So I wanted to know if I could save a lot of time by using sort of this paint and primer mixture uh, light blue color. Uh, and you can be the judge. I think I might have gotten a little too close, and this is an example of getting too close with the white primer. Uh, now, if you remember right, I, I showed you about this. I, I never said the exact distance. I would say you'll probably wanna be about two feet away. Uh, if, it, if it's just not going on thick enough, you can get in at about, I would say no closer than a foot away. Uh, do not go closer than a feet, foot away because this will happen where you'll see it kind of just clumped on some of those spaces. And, and even when I painted this miniature up later, you can still see where my issues were and where it didn't really blend well with the blue. Uh, be very careful, uh, stay far enough away. You won't have that as, that as much happen with these name brand ones, but with the non-name brand ones, the ones that are not meant for miniatures, be very careful about how you apply them. Stay far away from the miniature as, as far as you can while still applying it. Uh, so that, that goes for these. These are $4 each, work extremely well. The best of the non-miniature based paints that I can find. So if you're on a budget, this is what you should go, the way you should go. If you aren't and you're willing to spend, oh man, five times, <laughs> Actually, I bought this for $25. This is less paint than you get in one of these. But it's worth it. Um, I want you guys to know that I am not sponsored by Citadel in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I've given them way too much money, and I think that they are overpriced. That being said, this paint right here, the Wraithbone Model Paint Contrast Undercoat. It gives me the Zenithal almost highlight in one coat. You can get almost as close as you want to the miniature without it really becoming an issue. It applies on super thin, so you're not gonna cover up any details. When it's going on, unlike this, you can still see the details just fine. It looks great. It's even an off-white color that that shade, like parts of it are way darker than the, the highlighted areas. And you can see here, I'm, I'm impressed to say the least in this product. That being said, it's $25. And, and while this will cover maybe 30 to 40 miniatures, it's not... I, I wish I, I like to save money. <laughs> I want to save money. That being said, if you were to ask me, Josh, where are you going in the future? Like, how, which one are you going to use more of? It's probably this. And I don't know if you need it necessarily, but as a person who always wants to get better, as a person who always wants to improve my craft, and after using this, I don't know if I can go back to these. And while I might use these for certain projects, especially bigger projects, especially any terrain project that I need to use a spray primer on, I don't know if I'll ever use these for miniatures again. And that's because this product, despite being $25, is so good. And I'm, I, I, I don't know how else to say it. Hopefully the video will show you and you can be convinced one way or the other. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful to you. Uh, if you are a beginner painter, let me know what else you would like to see from me. Uh, I have a couple of other videos already in the works, but I'd love to hear what you wanna know, what you wanna see more of. 
Um, hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.